you know, with, with AI coming along, I, I sort of look at more things being added into the workflow over the last, oh, you know, year or so. Uh, a lot of it is like transcription, but also how are we going to title the podcast? Show notes being written, I'm a little bit leery of, um, but it is used to to assist in the process to write better show notes. So I think for for a long time, a lot of people have skipped over that. And AI has allowed us to to write better show notes. Uh, that doesn't mean copy and paste them in, because uh, AI is yeah. not is, <laughs> AI is it's an absolutely horrible writer. And I think one of the things that and I know this will come up in our discussion today is that when you see AI stuff just being copy and pasted, you know that it has been copy and pasted. Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. Here's the first part of my Clubhouse conversation about AI in podcasting. If there's one topic that has captured the collective psyche in the last little while, it's AI. But while the topic is fascinating, the uses are endless. And figuring out where it best fits into your own work process is another matter entirely. The group I assembled on Clubhouse to talk about AI and podcasting included a lot of veterans to the area of audio, video, and podcasting. They were voice actor and owner-operator of the SoundOff Media Company, Matt Kundal, Founder of Home Studio Mastery, Janaid Ahmed. On-air host and technical producer, mastering engineer, podcast and audiobook post-production professional at AR Media, Sean Savage. Founder of Spoken Life Media, LLC, and podcast Hall of Fame inductee, Rob Greenlee. And a longtime audio technology consultant at George the Tech and co-host of the Pro Audio Suite podcast, George Whittem. Each one of them had valuable insights into what tools work best for them and what tools you might want to look into for your own production. Considering where the industry is heading, it's probably a good idea to learn as much as you can about all these new and time-saving options. I hope you find it super helpful. If you're enjoying the Audio Branding Podcast, the best way to show your support is to share this with a friend and leave an honest review. I know it's really easy to just sit back and listen, and I totally want you to do that. But knowing what you like and what you're hoping I'll cover in the future would make your experience even better. So if you have a minute, please do reach out and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And now, here's my Clubhouse conversation about AI in podcasting. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at this very interesting moment in time because, wow, things are changing really fast, (laughs) which is kind of the point of this room, actually, because we're going to talk about AI and podcasting and how the panelists on stage are using it, what they think the best uses for it are, and just sort of get into a conversation. So again, those of you who are in the audience right now, if you have questions, you're welcome to raise your hand when we're ready to accept those questions, and we can bring you up on stage to ask them, or you can ask them in the room chat, which is happening. So (laughs) feel free to add in your two cents there and ask a question there too that we can ask on your behalf if you don't want to come up on stage. Well, thank you so much, first of all, for everyone who is on stage here with me, because I so appreciate your time and the time that you're taking to actually discuss this particular topic. I know you all have an expertise in it. Um, I want to get started by asking you a question about what the AI tools that you use regularly are in your podcast creation. So uh, if you could do me a favor and really quickly, very briefly introduce yourself and, and how you know about this topic, I'd love to hear that. But then if you could answer that question, that would be fantastic. I'm going to start with, uh, actually, I'm going to start, start with you, Matt. Because you're here and and you're live, so go for it. <laughs> yeah, so um, Matt Kundal, Sound Off Media Company. We make podcasts uh, sound sound great, and we build audiences at the same time. And you know, with, with AI coming along, I, I sort of look at more things being added into the workflow over the last oh, you know, year or so. Uh, a lot of it is 
like transcription, but also how are we going to title the podcast? Show notes being written, I'm a little bit leery of, um, but it is used to to assist in the process to write better show notes. So I think for for a long time, a lot of people have skipped over that, and AI has allowed us to to write better show notes. Uh, that doesn't mean copy and paste them in, because uh, AI is yeah. not is, <laughs> AI is a, it's an absolutely horrible writer. And I think one of the things that and I know this will come up in our discussion today is that when you see AI stuff just being copy and pasted, you know that it has been copy and pasted. Um, but it, but it can be nice to to have it you know personalized and, and and touched up quite nicely. You know another thing that 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 I found out is that when there's a lot of batch recording going on, or there's something that we recorded two months ago, it is really helpful now to not only just have transcription, but to have other things you know be used to to really recall and remember what we talked about. Timestamps being put in is 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 very effective, and and these these tools. Um, have, have really helped. Um, but I think if you rely on it too much, one of the things that we found out is that you can just waste as much time uh, just by, by having to make corrections. Uh, so a, yeah. a, a lot of it has been, a lot of it has been AI integrated stuff, titling SEO, how should we title our podcast It's all very small stuff, but it's all been very helpful and it's been incremental. Well, that's great. Yeah, I I do know that uh, coming up with show titles that might be SEO friendly, that kind of thing, I find very helpful from particular tools. Uh, are there particular tools that you use? Yeah, so <laughs> I have every tool in the box. Um, <laughs> however, one, one thing I have discovered now is that I'm only using about twenty percent of all of them. So mm -hmm. my toolbox resembles my my TV subscription. Where I've got five cables, uh, five streaming uh, subscriptions, and I'm only watching two or three shows on on each. <laughs> and so, yeah, I've, I've got makes headliner. so much sense. You know, it's I, I have headliner. It works well. Mm -hmm. um, the people at Riverside pitched me and said, "Hey, do you want to try our product?" And I tried the product, and it, listen, I'm sure it works great. But I already know, and I don't really have time to learn something new on Riverside when I'm already getting Squadcast and Descript yeah. uh, uh, down. And there's so many new things, especially with Underlord being. Uh, you know, presented from from Descript, that's massive to have to to sit and learn. And so, you know, by the way, and I knew this would happen with the one client I knew it would happen with who has to travel in to do recordings. She comes in to record a yoga podcast, and I knew she'd be the first, and it happened. Um, she said left when she meant right. How do we fix that? Well, we've used the AI tool now on two occasions okay. to, to repair her voice and and um, and, you know, Descript did a really good job, I got to say. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Now, when you say uh, Underhill, is that what you, what did you? Underlord has been. Underlord? Uh, yeah, Underlord is the new AI features that were launched by Descript oh. uh, slash Squadcast about three months ago. Okay, and shows what I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> They, they took a tongue-in-cheek cheek approach to to naming it. I mean, AI being the overlords, <laughs> I mean, they've, they've called it Underlord. Yeah. And it, it's it's uh, the tools are working out pretty well. Well, that's great. Good to know about that, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rob, let's go to you. How are you doing? And I know you were just on a, a YouTube podcast show not too long ago. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> well, thank you, Jody. And I, I appreciate you inviting me to, to join you. I'm in a... I'm a long time podcaster. I've been a podcaster for about 20 years. And, and so I do do a bunch of live shows. Now I did the live new media show. I had uh, Dave Jackson on the show and just in the last um, hour or so. So yeah, I've been doing probably about two, at least two live shows a week. Um, and I use um, StreamYard for that. And I just really spent the last year um, on a contract with uh, StreamYard to produce a um, podcast type topic program mm -hmm. on 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 the StreamYard channels on their platform, and and so it's, it's, I've been really kind of kind of steeped into this whole area of video and audio and the convergence, and then you know seeing a lot of these tools adding um, AI capability to them as well, and I think that's a little bit of the tension that we're seeing in the space right now is that. You know, some of the larger platforms are adding greater AI capability to them, and and it's putting a little bit in jeopardy some of the standalone AI kind of services or tools out there that are 
maybe a little duplicative to what you mm -hmm. can get with a, let's say a subscription to like a, like a Descript or somebody like that, or a podcast hosting company or something like that, that is building those capabilities into their tools. So I think that's the tension that we're going to see um, going forward is that a lot of the bigger platforms are going to build these capabilities into the, into their tools to add value to their existing customers and to be attractive to pick up new customers. So yeah, I have alluded to already a little bit of the tools that I use right, right now. And that's, that's uh, uh, StreamYard, which has some AI tools in it, um, but mainly Descript, like um, okay, like what's already been talked about by Matt to some degree. I've been a, a subscriber to the Descript platform, and it's it's um, I would say to be honest about it, they've really kind of struggled over the last year. I think to have an application and a tool that was kind of um, um, kind of reliable and easy to use, they. The user experience hasn't always been that great for it. And I found that, you know, prior to like maybe a month ago or so, it seemed like the tool would crash quite often. Oh, um, okay. So, so, but I, since they had a big massive update, like what Matt talked about, this concept, you know, like an area in the tool called the Underlord, uh, once they rolled that <laughs> I'm out. loving that name the right, more I hear right. it. <laughs> the actual tool itself has been a lot faster, much more reliable. It didn't crash or freeze up as much as it did prior. So I'm not quite sure if the reason for that is um, the processing power of the computer that you're using, because I do think that they do a lot of local processing of their audio files because they seem to want to download the media file. So you upload it to them. They do some processing to it, but then it, it, if you want to do some other processes, it has to re-download it again. So I think it's splitting up its processing between the local client and then the cloud. Um, mm -hmm. So some processes happen in the cloud, some processes happen in the in the actual client software. So so I would say, but but that's really the most um, the tool that I use most. Uh, is okay. on the AI side now. I've kind of tried a lot of the other tools out there. Um, and I just, you know, I was looking for one tool that I could just use consistently for transcripts and cleaning up the audio. I faced a little bit of pushback from my co-host of my new media show around using some of the cleanup tools that the Descript tool offers, like the um, words that people use, the the ums and the ahs and things like that, pulling out those those type of pieces in your audio. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it also pulls it out of the video too, and which can cause a video output that's a little jerky and not as smooth. Yeah. Um, and then also I've, I've the ability yeah. <laughs> right, to pull out um, like uh, spaces in the audio, like one second or two seconds or something like that. And that also creates an experience in the video that can be a little jerky as well. I do think it works pretty well for the audio, but I'm not sure it works as well for the video because it, it just creates this unnatural kind of view of the of the video. So, so anyway, mm -hmm. that's a long-winded explanation for my <laughs> more recent experiences with this as I've been trying to do audio and video at the same time. Yeah, there's a lot that um, I think people are dealing with and a lot, like you say, new things coming out all the time to um, build on the individual little tools that are out there and then roll them into one big thing. So yeah, there's a lot going on there. I know we're all super busy and pulled in so many different directions these days, so I wanted to take a moment to celebrate and thank the people who have taken the time to review this podcast. Lyrical 70 writes, great show. This show makes you think about sound in a whole new way. I would never have thought I'd find this so interesting, but I do, and her voice is so soothing. <laughs> Thanks, Lyrical 70. I'm glad I've got you hooked. I hope you'll stick around because there's always more interesting discussions about sound coming up. And speaking of that, let's get back to the show. Before we get too far off topic, though, Rob, I wanted to ask you about StreamYard because didn't they get bought by somebody? Uh, yes, they got purchased by a kind of like an app software company out okay. of the country of Italy, and it was called um, Bended Spoons. Okay. And so they also own... Um, 
think it's the Eversource app. Um, and then also Meetup. Uh, okay. Is there oh, they own Meetup. Okay. Other, other companies that they own. But yeah, they they went through and did a massive restructuring of the company. Yeah, I heard that they let go a lot of people. So I'm just wondering, yeah. like, what's going on with StreamYard now? Are they still going strong or have they put it on the back burner? What's going on? Well, I mean, I think to be honest about it, I think I think they've done an okay job so mm -hmm. far, but I think they have lost a little bit of trust in the community that Gage and Dan were able to build with that live Sunday show that they did to support the community. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people in the community really miss Dan and, and Gage. Um, and I think, you know, those guys set such a high expectation in the community of support sure. and access that this Bending Spoons company just has not been able to, to meet up to those expectations. So in some ways it's a, it's a decrease in the feeling of support that the community has and which can happen with an acquisition like that if a company has a different kind of ideology and the bar was set pretty high with the prior owners mm. um, that anything less than what they experienced with the prior ownership of the company would be seen as a negative thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a delicate line to walk. I yeah. get it. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, so, well, I mean, yeah, these things happen and, uh, you know, we're talking about AI tools and, and yep. software tools in general, they change all the time. Yeah, they do. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I wanted to, uh, get to, uh, Janaid and, and get his opinion on this. And, uh, yeah, Janaid, if you want to introduce yourself for a brief moment and then let us know what AI tools you're using for, your production, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. First of all, Jody, thank you so much for the invite. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I love AI and I love the tools that we have now. I'm a podcast host myself and I've been helping other podcasters and entrepreneurs set up their home studios for video. I mean, we, we are moving towards video, but audio is still the foundation for all communication. I mean, we've been doing it since were born as as little kids and you know I'm trying to teach my kids how to say words like and you know <laughs> use language it's it's a fun it's a fun place to be now as we're talking about just to touch back on the little bit of of uh, bending spoons and streamyard and how you know Hopin acquired streamyard back in 2021 of January for 250 million now if you look at the the entire infrastructure, entire the entire state of the internet as well, right? It's changed and how much time we're spending like on the different apps. We spent so much time in 2020 and 2021 on Clubhouse, whereas how much time are we spending in this in here now? We're at people have different uh, needs and, and uses. And that's where the AI is also coming in and in expediating and, and giving access to tools that can do more work faster in less time. So some of the tools that I've been using in my post-production uh, has been 11 Labs, where uh, my VA can now use my professional voice that I created in 11 Labs to do, you know, create um, the intro sections for all my episodes. Everything else is, you know, me speaking and having conversations with my guests or me creating my solo episodes. But that's one thing that was creating a bottleneck for my own production. I didn't have enough time. I had 40 episodes waiting for me to go in and record 40 minutes of one minute intros. And oh, I was like, wow. okay, I need, I need to find that's a way a <laughs> to expedite that. Yeah. And that's where the initial version of 11 labs helped. And then when they introduced the professional voice, like if you go in now, you can actually uh, use some of the celebrity voices for your own stuff as well. And they're getting paid for you to be using those voices. Okay. So there's a, you know, a just like we were talking about creative economy, you know, this is becoming that kind of space where voiceovers, uh, you know, you can now make additional level of income through these platforms. Well, if you're a celebrity, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess it helps. <laughs> if you're well, well, if you're a no name voice actor, I don't think you're no, going to make very much money on actually, that platform. You will, Jody. Um, I've seen people. <laughs> that have like uh, Hindi voices and they've like 23 million people have used that voice 
and this is a professional actor. So mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're, if you just think about it, you know, there's so many different needs. And if you think about what resonates, because there are so many more smaller communities that are more profitable in the niche spaces mm -hmm. than there are the larger ones. And if, and what resonates for the people there is these custom or these specific voices. So if you have, if you're, uh, like if you're Indian and, if, and you're bringing in Indian voices to your audience, guess what? You're going to be more uh, leaning towards trusting that voice as opposed to somebody from a totally different culture, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Totally. Yeah. And I mean, as long as there's consent, I say go mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. 100%. That's really always the key thing for me when it comes to Eleven Labs, consent. I mean, they, they're not, not anybody can go in there and create a voice. You mm -hmm. still have to give it the consent. Like, hey, I'm putting my voice up so others can use it. And then you're paying me for every time they're using it. So that's the the model that they're running it off of. And, and if I go and use somebody else's voices, well, they've already given consent and they're enabling that voice on the marketplace. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the use of it for your own voice is fantastic because then, yeah. like you said, you can just take that and put it into your own productions, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah, especially the better it gets. So, yeah, I mean, that's that seems like a really cool tool. Thanks. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we also have Sean. What do you say, Sean? You've been using uh, any particular AI type tools and, and please let people know who you are. Thanks, Jody. Uh, Sean Savage. I'm here in Toronto, Canada. My company's AR Media, and we do post-production audio for podcasts, for radio. We do radio imaging, broadcast quality. We're doing uh, a little bit of video. Most of my customers are corporate-based, and we have uh, some networks, too, that we do post-production for their audio. And we used to do everything, but we're only specializing in audio now. We can let other companies do all the other stuff. And uh, I have been using Descript for a while, but especially with the improvements, and I think it was mentioned earlier, they used to lose uh, Electron and Beam Coder for their back end, but now they're using WebAssembly and Web Codex. And what's happening there is they created a Media Transform server, which is actually an AI server that uses the GPUs. And now they've, they've tripled um, everything they can do in the background. And actually, I've been switching over to the web-based version of Descript, and it's actually faster than the desktop. But as far as AI going, like I said, we're using Descript, but we're not doing any audio on it. We're just using it to make clips for, for clients if they need it quickly uh, on the video. And it, it's serving very well. It does its thing. As far as AI with, with what we do, we do a lot of tight turnarounds for radio as well and for broadcast and the AI we're using for transcription and we don't do transcription, but the reason we use it is to navigate things quickly. So we do use Riverside to record remote guests and to do things on there. So we, we found a great use case for that where we would spit out a transcription, get the producer to go, okay, cut that, 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 and that out. And then we can go in quickly and navigate it before we do the audio post. So it does speed up the workflow, but we're not using the, the transcriptions to actually do transcriptions, but it's so much easier as opposed to get somebody to go listen through and go, okay, at this timestamp, at this timestamp, go from here to here. They just quickly go in. You can do a search. And they, yeah, they do a search or they, they just delete that part. And then it's not an edit, but the whole chunk that we don't have to waste time editing is gone. So we can navigate quickly. So it's speeding up that way. Also, we've been using it for quite a while to just navigate uh, getting rid of background noise. And there's a whole bunch of tools out there and some are way better than the other. But the ones we're using, we're using um, uh, DX Revive, which is really good. And there's some other ones. Isotope was one we were using, but there's some other ones. So the AI we're using there is just to help with that. But everything else is still going to be human done as far as mixing, mastering, content editing. Um, so the AI is helping us speed up the workflow to navigate through transcription, although we're not using it. And then for background noise, nothing is going to replace a human discerning ear. We've tested so many things to see, okay, can we save some time? But 
as was mentioned earlier, going back and checking kind of doubles the time where, hey, let's just do it from the beginning and and do yeah. it well. Yeah, Matt was saying that definitely. Yeah. And I mean, the two of you both have that kind of a business. So yeah, it's <laughs> definitely something you need to pay attention to. And it does all require a human ear to go check because you can't just rely on it and expect it to work. Um, Descript uh, uh, apparently, well, we've talked about Descript in the uh, area of the choppy edits. So for video, definitely. And George, I wanted to ask you about this because I know that you've been using Descript a lot yourself, also for video. So I thought that it might be an interesting thing to ask you about. Do you uh, find Descript to be a really good tool? Have you been, you've been using it a lot, right? You're teaching courses on this now, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I did put together a course. I just don't have the audience quite yet to teach it. Um, but the, yeah, I do use it. I'm using it about, gee, more than, longer than I thought, more than a year and a half, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I've watched it change quite a lot. I mean, at first it was like many new tools where I was like, should I really go down this path? Because it just did not seem ready for prime time. You know, it was, had, even the community was bemoaning the bugs and the confusion of certain things, but it's come a heck of a long way in the last six months. It's gotten much more reliable and robust. It's gotten way faster as they describe because of the new systems. But in terms of like what I use it for, like I was definitely getting a little leaning heavily on the de umming and, or the, I think they call it <laughs> removing filler words functions. Yes. Yeah. And so then what you have to do is, if you know, for me, it's a lot of just interviews. And so now I have to go back and I have to check. I really have to check every edit because if, if it's awkward and goofy looking after the edit, it's not, it's not quality. So I really backed way off on using that tool. And for a while, I was like, I want to keep my content tight, keep it short. This is what is good on YouTube. People expect jump cuts and they're used to it. That's fine. I really, I really changed my tune though, because First of all, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm not going to make any money on YouTube. I'm not ever going to monetize on YouTube. I don't give a damn what algorithm in YouTube likes or not doesn't like my video. It doesn't matter. Is the content good? Do you want to watch it? Is it is it compelling? Does it connect? And if the edits are so funky and jumpy and unnatural that it just becomes distracting, then it's not. A, not a good way to go. So yeah, I've really backed off on how much of the automated editing um, that I use. But if it's if it's something I shoot of my own, and I just and I know there's a lot, lot of gaps because I'm not scripting everything and I'm just speaking extemporaneously, then I definitely let it go through and chop out like lots of dead air just to get a first pass to kind of speed things along. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. There, There's a lot of really great uses for it, but I think like we've been discussing, it just needs a human oversight <laughs> um, just to be very careful about how much you use it, because I do notice those edits. I mean, maybe I'm a weird this, person. Well, this I is the thing, attention. right? So because like we all, all of us are hypersensitive to yeah. it because we all use it. But I think if you, you should really probably sit down with like a father, a parent or somebody else who's completely outside of your well realm and watch the videos with them. The first one I did where I actually did use Descript and did a tremendous amount of jump cuts. Um, it was just a single shot of me talking like a vlog, I guess. And I sat down with my dad, my, my dad. And I said, you know, 10 minute video, watch this video. And at the end, I was like, what did you think of the editing? And he said, I didn't really notice anything. And oh. the video had probably 160, 170 jump cuts. Mm -hmm. So what that told me was he was listening to it. He wasn't watching it. At least he was, but I mean, his brain was listening to it. Sure. You know it what I'm turned saying? off as far as the jump cuts were concerned. Yeah, yeah. So when the audio is really good and the audio edits are good and, and the descript audio editing is really good. Like they've gotten the cross fading down. There's never a click or a pop. I mean, the, it's really good with audio. So is the, if the audio is really smooth and natural, then you do kind of tune out. But once you tune in to the jump cuts, then you can't unsee it. Yeah. <laughs> it can be a little distracting. But like you were saying, I think we are very hypersensitive to it 
just because we spend our time in this space so often. Do you want to sound your absolute best when you're being interviewed on a podcast or when you're hosting your own show? I have a podcast episode and free downloadable worksheet called Sounding Your Best as a Podcast Guest off of the audiobrandingpodcast.com main page. Just click on the little square graphic to the left of the player displaying my podcast trailer. It gives you some comprehensive suggestions for where to start or for improving the sound you already have, including the type of microphones to consider and why, ideas for soundproofing your recording environment, and suggestions on how to get the best sound when you're being remotely recorded on services like Riverside FM or Squadcast. Don't let bad audio quality hold you back from being the best podcast guest or host you can be. And of course, if you happen to need voiceover for your intro and outro, feel free to get in touch. I'm happy to help. And now, back to the podcast. Just getting back to um, questions about the AI tools, there's a difference, obviously, between the podcast creation and the podcast promotion. So uh, if I could ask Matt how you use AI when you're promoting, I'd be really curious to hear what you're using. I've been sort of looking at Minvo, so I don't know. So this is not going to be a very exciting answer because I'll just point right back to Underlord and Descript. <laughs> okay, um, that's fine. Um, who, I, you know, listen, they do a pretty good job going in to find your cuts of, you know, so you can create a reel or something for TikTok. Um, it will, you just tell it what you want. I want something that's talking a little bit about, you know, job loss or entrepreneurship, whatever, you know, some subject matter. And it will, it will pick out a couple of clips. And from there, I'll go in and sort of massage the, the edit to create uh, a reel. And again, you know, video, this is my, I've only started, got into video in the last two years, really. And even for my own podcast, I'm, I'm six months in. So I'm jumping into AI and video at the same time. So this is really my first sort of go around with, with, with all this stuff. So I haven't really known any other way. But just to go back to what was said before, I've been doing audio for so long. And I've been hearing about, actually, I was one of the very first to, to sort of alert people about Descript. It was September 19, 2019. And I said, has anybody tried this? This looks interesting. You're able to edit by taking the words out. And I thought to myself, I'm never going to do this. I only know how to edit one way. I go back to cutting tape and splicing all that together. Um, so I only know how to edit that way. And so I, I'm never, I'm probably never going to use a tool that removes words from a screen in order to create the edit. In video, yes, but certainly not when it comes to uh, creating an, an audio product. But in terms of promotion, I, I think that's the only way that, I, that I'm using AI at this juncture to... Um, to promote and that's really just sifting out the highlight clips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense and it does make it easier since you have a transcript through Descript. So, I mean, you can pick those things out and it'll actually give you the transcript of the clip that you chose. Right. So that's good. too. Yeah. I mean, Underlord does well with there, but I'm trying out a few other products as well. Pod magic is another one that is, uh, that has done a pretty good job. They're actually looking for the, they actually will go and look for the clips that will, get you a little bit more results as it comes to, you know, Google and, and YouTube. So there's what many different ways. Pod magic. Yeah. Oh, pod, pod magic. magic. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. I yeah, that's that's one that I've just started to try out just to see how it goes. But so every everything sort of has a bit of a slant and a bit of a tilt on it. And I think somebody um, was mentioning earlier, oh, I don't care about the YouTube algorithm, which is a great approach. But yeah. there are people who do care about that stuff and, and and think they need an edge and maybe pod magic is that edge for them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole bunch of tools out there to try. So yeah, it's definitely worth trying them. Not sure I'm going to have time to learn them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Rob? What do you uh, use for promotion? Yeah, I use the same tools pretty much that Matt talked about. You know, mm -hmm. I have used uh, CapCut. I have used, um, you know, to create the short clips. I've used um, StreamYard has a tool in there that will create, um, you know, like vertical videos, th that kind of stuff that it, that uses an AI algorithm to, to produce. And Descript does the same thing. I've been playing a lot. Uh, playing around a lot with the Descript tool on that side as well. Um, so I think those are the main ones. 
I did get reconnected to Headliner today. I talked to to Neil, the CEO of the company today, and and so I was going to play around with his tools too to see how that um, kind of fits into the equation as well as far as being able to make clips that I can use on the on the short form side. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, those are the main things I'm actually using it for. I do use, well, doing, doing live shows, I have to create um, actually show notes and descriptions for those shows in advance of the shows because that's part of the scheduling process that you have to do if you want to schedule a live program is that yeah. you have to put in a description and a title and stuff like that before you do the show. So, so a lot of the, a lot of the production that we're talking about on this call is, is really in, in post-production kind of creating a description based on what you have already produced. But, but if you're doing a live show, you have to think about it in the pre-production side too. So it's, mm-hmm. um, I mean, that's another element that you can use like a chat GPT or somebody like that to help you come up with, like a, like a format for your, you know, your live shows that you're trying to come up with what the themes of that show are going to be before you actually do it. And that can be a little tricky because sometimes you don't really know the flow of the conversation that's going to happen and all the topics that you're going to cover. I mean, I try and cover all of the key bullets that are made by the, the ideas that I've given to AI to, to produce. And I do kind of feed the AI algorithm in chat, uh, GPT 4.0 or Omni or whatever you want to call it. And it does do a pretty good job of of giving me a template of that kind of like pre-show kind of description that I can put into to YouTube and get pushed out to LinkedIn and Facebook and all those in advance of the show. So it actually will schedule a live event. Um, so that's important too. I mean, I mean, if you want to get people to come to your live show, I think you have to give them some idea of what they're going to get when they, they tune in. This has been part one of our Clubhouse discussion. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time. <laughs>